by one piece of money, I'm an MD. Uh, being a physician isn't just about stale threads and broken legs and delivering babies, even. It's about healing things, and people in know me know that I'm pretty good at healing stuff, fixing people's lives, I can heal finances, and I can even heal a person's education. Now, this is a little known aspect of my work, but in fact, I've been doing this for the best part of three decades. In fact, in 1980, I gave a presentation for the Inner London Education Authority. They had a, a language accountancy workshop, it was called. Uh, and I was talking about different barriers to study, including the one that I mentioned to you here and now. But to, to make my point here, let me, get, let me come to my story, okay? I'm a pretty, pretty intelligent person. I'm a member of NASA. I'm a complete disaster at maths, and I was. <laughs> I went through school, and I got lousy, lousy maths all the way through. I somehow managed to scrape through my final examination so that I got to medical school, but you know, I still never very good at maths. But I took a great interest in it after I left school. I used to read a lot and I taught myself some stuff that still had this big setback. And one thing particularly I was determined to do was to learn calculus. Yeah, learn it again. I kind of used it football in school. Uh, I didn't do advanced math, but I did advanced uh, physics. And you had to use some calculus. I guess I must have got some of it right, but all I know is that you know, later I used to know. In the 40s and 50s, I was well aware of the fact that typing was to become a closed book. I was determined to fix this, and over the years, I bought lots of books, but nice little old uh, school type book. I got teach yourself calculus book. Look, I got calculus for dummies, I got calculus books all over the house, <laughs> and I still couldn't read calculus. Uh, I'd read so far, and I'd bog down and uh, put the book away and quit. Now, as it happens, I do know why people do that, but it takes a pretty uh, pretty big upheaval of your education. But there is a reason, actually. There's an explanation why people bog down. And the secret, I'm going to share the secret with you, I actually fix this for myself. Well, let me tell you what happened, uh, which is that um, I realized that I didn't know enough algebra, but really, I should have known to exactly how to make calculus or what's bog down in the Cartesian coordinates. Like, you know, they sort of X like one, X line and Y line graph. And the, sh- the, the equation showing the, 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 slope, the slope or shape of the curve, all this thing. I just used to be like cold. And I realized I didn't really know any, any algebra and any trigonometry. You know, signs and cosines, these were things I used. All my professional life, I've used the expression of sine curve without really knowing what it's I don't know what the shape is in the same place, but I'm not going to hide what it's known. Anyway, I do not. So, I realized I didn't know enough trigonometry. So, I turned the clock back a bit, got a book on trigonometry. Uh, I started to, uh, first of all, I realized that I didn't actually even understand the word trigonometry itself. It comes from uh, Greek. Trigon means three or three sided figure, and metron is measuring out the amount of metrics. And or meter and those kind of things. What actually was happening here is that there were so many words I didn't understand. I needed to clear them up. And this, <coughs> this concept comes from the work of a man. Well, two people, there were two key people in the 20th century. One was a Russian uh, language psychologist called Lev Vygotsky. And he wrote some amazing treatises on words, uh, particularly the relation between words and concept. And from his work, I developed the idea of a thought home, a, a failed word and a thought hole. If you have a word that doesn't go, you don't think it's a misunderstood word, you don't feel it what it means. That creates a big blank in my thinking. This is what I think the best people do. And the other person, the second big one, they wrote this book. This is a great guy called Alfred Kozlowski. You'll hear me refer to him many times in my writings. In 1936, he wrote a book called Science and Sanity. Very dense, and a lot of it. If you can wade through it, it's fantastically rewarding. One of the important things that uh, Kozlowski talks about, he called it semantic reaction. Semantic as in you know, words and construction of language and so on. And uh, in this book, page 36, he talks about what he calls a semantic reaction. And that is where there's an emotional charge in the word. In fact, there's you can actually measure this biologically. If you put a person on a polygraph, that's a lie detector type machine, 
you actually got to read and you can read on the meter. Uh, as I said, because it's the primitive was about 1936. And I found that really quite fascinating because it was really almost you know, before the days of modern lie detectors. Well, of course, lie detectors don't detect lies, they detect stress. And really, that's what Kozlowski was saying in this book, is that words that fail or words that are misunderstood or words that have very powerful emotional context can still work. And, you know, you, you lose track of things, you, you get misunderstandings, and education goes blurry. The reverse of this, which I found to be true, is that if you clean up these failed words and you get used to them, uh, then these four holes actually disappear. And more importantly, you can actually recover your whole education, I think, seem uh, very impeccable. But actually, it's true, and this is what happened to me here, which is why I'm sharing this is the story. The key is one other book. This is the key, okay? <laughs> it's a big, fat, wallet dictionary. Well, this has to be dictionary of the American language, and we're here, so we don't know which dictionary is the British dictionary. None of them. Basic words like that uh, exist in all good dictionaries, and you really want a good dictionary. So I began uh, passing some of these words, uh, if it well, should be monetary itself. I realized I didn't even know what the subject meant, but the mind how it works. Uh, and I began to uh, study that, and all of a sudden, I began to start recovering my education. I went further and further back in trying to do trigonometry. I realized that I couldn't handle algebraic equations. So I went back to basic algebra. The next thing is I find I'm just a bit unclear about what exactly factorizing means and what are the kind of basic expressions that you need in algebra. And I just used this dictionary. I looked at the words and I'm sure I was really good with the words. And all of a sudden, my ability started to return in math. I mean, just a half an hour ago before I switched to the camera, I thought I must have done this on the camera. I worked through a page in math books, a uh, math book page, uh, giving lots of uh, factorizing and things like that, which I, was, I couldn't have done at school. I used to get like, 10 or 20 out of 100. I'm suddenly getting the scores of 98 and 99. <laughs> it is amazing. Anyway, there was a whole method here. Uh, you could call this uh, word clearing. I like to think of it as recovering failed words. The stuff that uh, Kozinski left us in the field of study really is some amazing material. As I said, I was lecturing this back in the I, I want to share this with you, but uh, I'd like to show you in a sort of simple demonstration how this works for me. And then we can look at the bigger issue of how it could work for you, and especially and particularly you know, children in your family. Because children are thrown into this. I mean, I will say, I don't think it's my fault. You know, I'm not done it. I've got two of them later life. But my schooling was a disaster because the math teacher especially just threw out these words, didn't really explain them, they were missing concepts, and I just struggled and floundered. And of course, math is simple, really. It's just simple and becoming a very logical person. So I ought to have been good at math. In fact, I wasn't. But the, the point is, it wasn't math confusing, it was basic language confusing. And that's something I would have also. And if you have these failed words and fault holes, you actually become inept and lose ability. You know, a musician who didn't really know strictly what a, what a chord was or a modulation or something like that is not going to perform well as a musician. It sounds crazy. I mean, there are great musicians that don't even know these words. What I'm saying is, when you meet words and they're, they're confusing to you, then you'll stumble. If you never had the word, that's a different kind of story. Okay, anyway, I'm going to tell you more about this, and uh, I hope you'll join me. I'm afraid that I'm still looking in for this. Uh, this amazing technology of failed words and failed codes. This is Dr. Keith from Renegade Wood. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>